I'm sitting here with a Zoji Rushi coffee maker. Um, this is a probably five or six year old unit. Um, I bought it back in, I think, 2010. I had one before that as well, which was in uh, about 2006, and that one failed on me, and I think it stopped brewing or something, so, or maybe it had a leak. And so what I did was order a new one. Um, and so this is that 2010 one that I replaced the first one with. Now it's been six years later and suddenly this coffee maker, which I, I've got to say, I really like this coffee maker because it's simple. It makes good coffee, um, easy to understand and program and so forth, so on. Uh, but it just suddenly did not, heat up the water uh, anymore uh, very well. It, it would be kind of sporadic. You would start the thing brewing and it would brew for about 15 seconds and then suddenly um, stop. Um, and then magically after a little while, it might start brewing again. So um, I did some research into this and I found out that the, um, the problem really is the little uh, thermal sensor in there, a thermocouple. Um, not a thermocouple, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's actually a bimetallic disc which, which uh, controls the temperature, uh, a temperature which is about 145 degrees centigrade, uh, I think, uh, plus or minus uh, a few degrees, and it, and it regulates around that, that spot. So that um, when that a bimetallic disc reaches a certain temperature, and that temperature, um, there's a certain temperature while it's brewing the coffee, but then after there's no more water in there, the, uh, the temperature rises very quickly and it, it shuts off, um, shuts off the, uh, uh, the current to the whole circuit and, uh, and, and stops it. So I think that that's how it works. Uh, anyway, the problem was to find a suitable, um, suitable component to replace the one that was in there. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing apart and uh, let's, uh, I'll show you exactly what I did to fix this. The, the end result was that it works beautifully and, uh, and it uh, cost me about, I think a total of about uh, $15 to buy the part and have it shipped to me. So uh, let's get started with it. I'll show you uh, kind of what I did here. Well, the first step is to remove the bottom of this. Uh, you, uh, obviously you've unplugged it and everything, but you wanna re remove the plastic uh, bottom which has about six screws, uh, six or seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven screws. And maybe a couple of feet too with screws. I can't really remember. Uh, those feet have long since disappeared and I replaced them with felt pads. Um, one comment here that uh, most of these are Phillips head screws, but there was one, and I believe it was in this spot right here, where um, there was actually a, I think a hex head screw, kind of a funky screw that you need a special screwdriver for. And, uh, and after I got that out, I, I actually just replaced it with, a, with another screw so it'd be easier to do. So let's, let's just start unscrewing these uh, around the periphery. All right, so I have all of the screws out at this point. Let's remove the cover. Should kind of pull right off. And now you can see inside, pretty straightforward. Um, don't know how much you can see in there. I don't have a good source of light, but, uh, but maybe you can see it fine. Uh, and next step is to remove this crossbar here, two screws. Let me just do 
do that. That's one. Second one. This bar acts as a support for this heating element inside and also I've noticed it kind of acts like a heat sink and also as a guide to to keep these these two um, cords here in, in place. So try to replace those where they are. Okay, so um, you can see the the component that um, that is in question is this one right here, and it's very very easy to um, to to actually um, replace to get in there and replace. So so what you would do, and I'm not going to go through this all now again because. Uh, you know, because I just basically fixed it and, um, and uh, you know, I don't want to screw anything up, but, but uh, let me just explain what I did. There's a clip here that goes across this part. You see that it's black here. I think the original one was, was white and more ceramic looking, but um, you, you can see there's a little clip here, this silver thing. Um, that if you if you grab the back side of that back here and pull on it, this thing will just just basically snap off the heating element, and it'll it'll uh, free this whole assembly in here. Okay, and you'll be able to just pull this right off of the heating element. And I don't know if you can see, but there's some, some white um, compound in between this bimetallic disc sensor and the heating element. And what that white compound is, is it's a, a thermal transfer compound, which uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit later exactly what that is when I explain to you um, where to get that and where to get a replacement for this for this uh, thermocouple. I keep saying thermocouple, I actually mean bimetallic disc sensor. Uh, you can see that there's a connection here of, of uh, two, two wires, this brown one and the white one, brown one, white one, and you, you basically what you have to do is uh, I think originally there was there was kind of a metal piece on there that's crimped on, but what I did was basically um, cut those off from the old one, uh, strip back the insulation a little bit on each of the wires by about um, half a quarter of an inch um, or so, and then with with an exacto knife sort of scrape on the wire a little bit get get a lot of the oxidation and so forth off so that you can do a good solder joint then uh, then i then uh, basically on the replacement uh, i would uh, stick the wire into the holes on each side and and just uh, solder and the solder uh, really took to all of this really well, and I was able to make. You have to ensure that you make a really, really good joint, but uh, but it proved to be fairly fairly easy for me. Okay, so so that's the explanation of exactly what was replaced. I think that's probably all that you need. You don't need to take anything else apart here, um, which I originally did just because I didn't know what the what the whole problem was and. Uh, uh, no need to do that. Just take the cover off and unsnap this this little um, uh, uh, clip here. Take off the component. Uh, unfasten the or cut off the wires. Strip the wires. Um, clean off the wires. And then uh, solder the new part in there. Um, apply some of the uh, thermal compound between these two parts and sort of mate them together and then re reattach the clip. It's really uh, fairly, fairly simple. And um, if I had to do two or three of them, I'll bet I could do it in, in about, about five to 10 minutes each. So, um, uh, okay, so that's 
it for this part. I'm going to go um, back and uh, uh, just reassemble this for my own self here, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you uh, the two parts that you uh, need to have here, and I'll give you the part numbers and where to order them. Okay. Okay, so these are the two parts that you need to fix the Zojirushi coffee maker. Um, this one here is the uh, bimetallic disc sensor, and uh, um, the the part number is a ocsparts.com part number one zero five zero zero six, um, and then. To go with that, what you need to get is some of this uh, silicon heat transfer compound. Uh, one source for that is MG Chemicals, and I think you can see that written on there, catalog number 860-4G. And with those two items um, and with the instructions that I gave you before, you should be able to um, replace the Zoji Rushi. And uh, as you can see, it's sitting back there on my uh, counter, you know, working like a charm, and uh, you'll get hopefully a few more years' life out of it this way. If you go to buy a new one, they're very expensive now if you can even find them. I know that the very first one that I ever bought back in 2006 was $49. 2010 was, was uh, I think, $79, and after that, it was uh, now, I think it's around 150 or 160 even more, if you can even find them. So uh, thanks, thanks for watching. Hope it helps.